So what do you think is going to happen to this EcoBoost Mustang by switching from E85 pump gas to some super high octane racing methanol? Oh! Whoa! What? Whoa! You know I'm at it again, so I'm going to see if there is a difference between pump E85 and this awesome M5 Racing Methanol from VP Racing Fuels. By just switching fuels, is there power to be had? And that's what I'm here to find out. So let's go ahead and suit up so we can handle this stuff safely. Yeah, M5. This is some interesting stuff. If you're not familiar what M5 is, because I wasn't up until not long ago, M5 is a methanol blended fuel. So it is mainly methanol, but it has a trick up its sleeve that makes it more potent than just straight M1, which is their like 99.9 .9 whatever percent methanol. So asking yourself, what can possibly make methanol better than just nice pure methanol? That's because the crazy people over at VP Racing Fuels have formulated M5 with nitroparaffins. So nitroparaffins are chemical compounds very closely related to nitromethane. You know, that really awesome, crazy, very explosive fuel that makes top field Draxers do the quarter mile at over 300 mile per hour. Yeah, that stuff. That stuff is in this fuel, but in a small quantity, so it's safe to run. So that's what gives M5 an advantage over just regular plain methanol, is the fact that there are these nitro paraffins in here that give it a little extra kick. You know what I'm saying? So this stuff is supposed to make more power than regular methanol, and methanol is supposed to make more power than E85. So I should see a noticeable difference running pump E85 to some extreme fuel like this M5. At least that's what I'm hoping. So of course, my car here is equipped with a true auxiliary fuel system with a separate fuel cell for anything I want to throw in here. Like I said, right now, there's just some good old corn in there, you know? And that's usually what the car runs because E85 is cheap and readily available at the pump and it's a lot safer to handle than methanol. But there's definitely power being left on the table between what E85 can supply and what methanol can supply and of course what M5 can supply. So with that out of the way I do have to drain this uh, E85 out so I can go ahead and make sure that I only have the M5 running through the system but before I do that I'm going to go ahead and show you the baseline run that I just got on same day today that I'll be doing the M5 run with the pump E85. My baseline run with the E85 was 4.15 seconds. So, uh, you know, that's on par with some of the best runs that this car has done 40 to 80. But I would love to see that number dip under four seconds because that will definitely let me know if there's a power increase. So uh, I guess there's only one way to find out and that's by me getting the work. All right, so I gotta get this E85 sucked out of here. I think that's it. Yeah, we're empty. You look right down in there and yeah, she pretty dry. There's, there's just a little bit left in there, but that ain't gonna do nothing. So now the fun part, go ahead and add the M5 to the system. Phew, I don't know what to think here, man. I'm like nervous and excited. Like I know it's not gonna do anything, but like in terms of hurting the car, but you never know. And I don't know if you looked, but I have these big gloves on to help protect me from this stuff. I'm actually gonna go get some eyewear as well. <sighs> be a little bit more careful when handling. So no risk, no rewards, right? Isn't that what they say? So this will protect the eyeballs. Let's go ahead and add it to the fuel system. All right, so that, that should be enough to do what I need to do. Make sure that's all in there nice and tight and all sealed up. 
All right, so I got the car cooling down here with the fan and the hose on the intercooler as I do between all of the runs and tests that I do. So I just went out and, you know, drove the car to try to get the, you know, E85 cycled through the lines. And I'm pretty sure I did, because as I was driving, I noticed that it just seemed to be a little bit more torquier as I did some pulls. Although that could very well be a placebo effect, but there's only one way to find out for sure. And that's to get back out on that road and do another 40 to 80 hit. So I'm just gonna give the car a couple more minutes of cooling down right here and then we'll be back out on the road. So just give me one second. Well, I'm about to do the pull here, see what happens. Honestly, I don't even know. Like, if, like I said, could have been placebo, but I definitely felt like the car was getting more torquey uh, before it got a little too hot, then it started pulling itself back. But we'll, we'll see here in a quick moment. We sure will. So let's see if we can get under four seconds. That would be awesome. And hit it. see what it did so let's see if the draggy is telling me what the butt dyno is telling me because that definitely felt better so let's take a look here at what whoa okay so this is interesting so it looks like it made the car slower on the top half look at what happened here it was actually moving pretty good i've never seen it that consistent on the low end if you look at the accelerometer how it's pretty even on the low end 0.75 g or so acceleration that's pretty good but right there with that second half things just get wonky and it just falls off that's really strange so is that due to not tuning like Okay, do I actually need to tune this to get the benefit out of it? Because the first run with E85, once again, was 4.15 seconds. You can see, except from the initial hit of the run, where it, you know, peaks and torque, that it wasn't as consistent there on the low end as it was with the M5, but it was more consistent up top. But with the M5, it was way less consistent up top but a lot more lower end torque. So, okay, maybe the butt dyno wasn't lying in terms of feeling more punch. Uh, so it seems like there is more punch, but it seems to be affecting the power on the top end of the uh, RPM band. Now I've read that these kind of fuels, uh, you know, E85 takes a lot. You need to increase the volume a lot and methanol takes even more volume. So without adjusting anything, is probably not what I need to do. Perhaps what I need to do is adjust the auxiliary fuel injection system to start injecting all of it as soon as possible. Uh, maybe that's what methanol needs. Maybe that's what this fuel needs is the, to be all of it. You know, maybe it just needs a lot more. Um, I noticed that the car was running a little bit on the leaner side than what it does with E85. Uh, but it's still within a nice, safe, uh, power-making air-fuel ratio. It's just, it's weird, man. It's weird what this fuel has done. Now, it's very interesting data. I'm almost very compelled. I'm very tempted to change this controller and go back out and see what happens. Because I was almost certain this fuel would make the car faster overall. But it seems like there is some tuning involved to get the most out of this fuel. So if there's anything we learned in this video is you can't simply just make more power by switching fuel. Sometimes you can, this time you can. Some fuels do require some tuning adjustments because of how they react. And uh, well, it seems like this fuel definitely needs some adjusting. There's something in the tune that's not playing along well with it. And unfortunately, it's affecting the car's power. Well, I can't say I was expecting this one. Um, you win some and you lose some. So yeah, I guess that is what it is. But that's why I do these tests um, to know because I would have just automatically assumed it was going to make more power without changing a thing. 
but it hasn't. And it's crazy, man. It is very crazy, but uh, let me know what you think about what I have found here in the video and, uh, you know, leave your thoughts in the comments. Otherwise, it's going to wrap it up here for the video. And of course, you know what to do. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with everyone you know. If you want some more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, and keep a look out for next Cars Creative video. So I just couldn't end this video without trying to find out more about why this fuel lost power. So I went out one more time right after I finished editing the video and this is what I got. Now while it's still technically slower, 40 to 80, check out that accelerometer. Holy crap. After adjusting the injection controller to max out fuel flow earlier, that spike in torque and force over 1G was very, very noticeable. Almost 1G spike after that, and then two spikes in the middle at 0.75, which neither of the runs, including the fastest run, had. In fact, by looking at the accelerometer, this run looks like it should have been the fastest. But then if you look on the very right side of the graph, you can see how it trails off yet again. But down low, oh my God, there is so much more torque and you can see it. So there's definitely something to this fuel. There is definitely power to be had. And this is where my inexperience of performance tuning, unfortunately, comes into play. But once I figure out exactly what this fuel wants and needs, oh boy, will this be something special. As of now, this fuel has so much more to offer, but I just don't know what it is yet. So I guess we're just going to have to find out. But that's going to be for another video.